Today's New Testament reading is from Acts, the 23rd chapter. When it was day, the Jews made a plot and bound themselves by an oath neither to eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. There were more than forty who made this conspiracy. They went to the chief priests and elders and said, We have strictly bound ourselves by an oath to taste no food till we have killed Paul. Now, therefore, you, along with the council, give notice to the tribune to bring him down to you, as though you were going to determine his case more exactly, and we are ready to kill him before he comes near. Now the son of Paul's sister heard of their ambush, so he went and entered the barracks and told Paul. Paul called one of the centurions and said, Take this young man to the tribune, for he has something to tell him. So he took him and brought him to the tribune and said, Paul the prisoner called me and asked me to bring this young man to you, as he has something to say to you. The tribune took him by the hand, and going aside asked him privately, What is it that you have to tell me? And he said, The Jews have agreed to ask you to bring Paul down to the council tomorrow, as though they were going to inquire somewhat more closely about him. But do not be persuaded by them, for more than forty of their men are lying in ambush for him, who have bound themselves by an oath neither to eat nor drink till they have killed him, and now they are ready, waiting for your consent. So the tribune dismissed the young man, charging him, Tell no one that you have informed me of these things. Then he called two of the centurions and said, Get ready two hundred soldiers, with seventy horsemen and two hundred spearmen, to go as far as Caesarea, at the third hour of the night. Also provide mounts for Paul to ride, and bring him safely to Felix the governor. And he wrote a letter to this effect. Claudius Lysias, to his excellency the governor Felix, greetings. This man was seized by the Jews, and was about to be killed by them when I came upon them with the soldiers and rescued him, having learned that he was a Roman citizen. And desiring to know the charge for which they were accusing him, I brought him down to their council. I found that he was being accused about questions of their law, but charged with nothing deserving death or imprisonment. And when it was disclosed to me that there would be a plot against the man, I sent him to you at once, ordering his accusers also to state before you what they have against him. So the soldiers, according to their instructions, took Paul and brought him by night to Antipatris. And on the next day they returned to the barracks, letting the horsemen go on with him. When they had come to Caesarea and delivered the letter to the governor, they presented Paul before him. On reading the letter, he asked what province he was from. And when he learned that he was from Cilicia, he said, I will give you a hearing when your accusers arrive and he commanded him to be guarded in Herod's praetorium. This is the word of the Lord. For today's meditation on God's word, we welcome Pastor Gavin Mize. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So you take a look at our reading here in Acts chapter 23, beginning at the 12th verse. It's important to know what led up to the plot to kill St. Paul. And I think it really boils down to chapter 23 right at the 6th verse when it says, Now when Paul perceived that one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Brothers, I am a Pharisee, a son of Pharisees. It is with respect to the hope and the resurrection of the dead that I am on trial. Thus says Paul. And so the Sadducees and the Pharisees began arguing amongst each other. For one believed in the resurrection of the dead, that would be the, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees did not, nor did they believe in angels. Yet Pharisees acknowledged them all. And so, as they come to bring Paul before trial, Christ says to Paul, 
again before our reading. Christ says, Take courage, for as you have testified to the facts about me in Jerusalem, so you must testify also in Rome. We too must testify according to Christ and the resurrection of the dead, particularly His resurrection and our resurrection in the second coming when when Christ comes to judge both the living and the dead. There's a philosophy called utilitarianism that believes that the moral worth of an action is solely based determining by its contribution to the overall well-being, basically to maximize happiness and therefore minimize suffering. This isn't the life of a Christian. This is the life of an idealist, I suppose, but not of a Christian. We must confess the resurrection of the dead, and we must confess what Christ has done for us, regardless of whether it maximizes happiness or whether it decreases and minimizes suffering. But for Christ said that you will suffer on his behalf. And now they have brought Paul before, or they will be bringing Paul before the council. They take Paul from... Claudius, Lysias, and turn him over to Felix, the governor, so that he would stand trial. But there was a plot to kill him and to make sure that he did not make it there, that he would be killed along the way. And I am reminded of another who confessed that he would tear down the temple and in three days would rise it again. And the, and the people turned against him. And that was Jesus the Christ. And so Jesus did. His body, his temple was destroyed on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins. And yet the resurrection did happen. He arose from the dead. And because of that resurrection and the forgiveness of sins, you too will be raised from the dead. The second, catech- the second commandment says, tells us that we should fear and love God so that we do not curse, swear, use satanic arts, lie, or deceive by His name, but call upon Him in every trouble, pray, praise, and give thanks. Even in, when death is in sight or your sins are in your face, especially when your sins are in your face, And because your sins are there, you shall die. Remember, Christ is the resurrection and the life. Christ is your life and your resurrection, in which you were resurrected in the waters of holy baptism and in which you will be resurrected from the dead in the second coming. That all will stand, acknowledge Christ, and every knee shall bow. And the sheep and the goats, the wheat and the tare, or the weeds, will be separated. And yet there stands Christ in this life telling us, Take courage, for as you have testified to the facts about me in Jerusalem, so you must testify also in Rome. And so here we testify to the waters of holy baptism, to the preaching of God's word, and to the sacrament of the altar, that you would have the forgiveness of sins as you are on trial. Take heart, for Christ is with you. And even when all this seems to be lost and we are actually dead, hearts cold and unbeating, we will have life again. In that same resurrection of the dead that Paul refused to disavow. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen.